Hello. Kevin, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm South African. I'm recently in the UK. I'm here volunteering at a campsite um, in London at the moment. I like going out on camps. I like hiking. I like cycling. I like seeing new places. I like exploring new areas. I like trying to be the first person to stand on that random rock in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> That's awesome. But so many people seem to hate the great outdoors. They think, you know, spiders, creepy crawlies. What's so good about camping in your view? The fresh air, um, just to see everything green. I'm not, I don't really, I'm not a green person. My favorite color is blue, but to actually go out and just see the green, the trees, the grass, the everything just grow and to just see wide spaces, not skyscrapers, just nothingness. Uh, no city, just quiet. And to actually, if you've ever gone camping like in the middle of Africa, you can just stand and you can see the stars. I mean, to actually just see the stars, like, I mean, no moon, no city. To actually see the stars, you can actually see like those perfect pictures of the Milky Way. You can actually see that just generally. So, yeah, those are the nice things about camping, just to go out and see all that exploring. I find it hard to think about camping without remembering a story about my parents. Um, when when they were both little kids, um, my dad was a member of the, the local scout group and they went camping um, and they just stayed in a random farmer's field out in the countryside. And then, you know, my dad telling the story to my mum later, they realised that it's actually the field at the bottom of, you know, their garden, essentially, where she was growing up. So they had been within yards of each other uh, when they were small children, uh, but then didn't meet properly until they were both working at the same organisation sort of in the in the closest town um, years later. Um, but obviously that was just some random farmer's field. So are people a bit more picky now about where they camp? And what if someone wants to just give it a go? Are there rules? Can you just rock up and camp anywhere? Well, from where my experience is, you never just rock up, but you could, <laughs> but you always have the chance of getting moaned at by some random farmer if you just go into his field. <laughs> um, if you really want to go camping, you need to go camping with a nice view, like like mountain tops in a valley. In valleys, you must just be careful of the cold because you can get that one morning, like nice hot summer day of 40 degrees, and then the next morning it's like negative three in the hole. Oh, that sounds great. I think it's important to remember the uh, the need for actually planning where you're going to go in terms of is this going to be far too cold, etc. But the idea that you can just find a nice view somewhere and go, you know what, I'm going to camp here. That's quite nice. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's that's one of the things that I like about camping. And one of the things that I think bugs me about this new word that we seem to have heard, glamping, it's, it's not only a word I hate, but a concept I find kind of odd, this idea that you know, camping was too boring. Let's glam it up with glamping. Oh, I'd um, be well up for that. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not a fan of the. No, idea no, no. I understand that these um, days glamping. <laughs> but you know, so people people feel like they can't necessarily leave their gadgets behind. But camp gadgets and gadgets that are designed for camping are a thing. Um, so, as someone who has been camping before, what other gadgets that you actually think are, are helpful or useful on a camp? Uh, okay, modern day camping gadgets, I would say, what are useful, but aren't necessary. It's not, you don't really have to use modern day camping gadgets, but for the glamping reason, yes, you can get those nice little gas um, fridges, nice little gas cookers, um, and you get so many different types of them, and they're all compact and light. If you want to go hiking as well, you can carry the full kit. But yeah, you get, um, you get the quick pop-up tent, um, those tents which you just throw in the air and poof, they up. You get camping mattresses, you get blow mattresses. They're not really very modern, but yeah, you get nice big modern mattresses where you can just go push up in seconds and then you have a nice big bed. And then um, you got the gas cookers, which I mentioned. Um, you get different types of gas, different heating. What's originally you packed in camps with food, what you know you could cook, and maybe you would go explore the different types of cuisine in the area you're in. And now you go and just take your own food and you've got your fridge and you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. So, yeah, there are many different cab gadgets. Like you get all the little multi-tools and knives and fancy sparkers and all the interesting stuff as well, the little toys which everyone finds interesting. Like you get modern day, you can get little hammocks, little hammocks in a bag. It's an old-fashioned gadget, but it is a nice modern little twist to it. You can get little ones put in a bag the size of a fist. And it weighs nothing and it takes up hardly any space. And then 
just put up your uh, hammock between two um, trees and voila, bed for the night. Yeah, I've seen uh, I've seen uh, a, a fantastic hammock recently. You put it up and it's got a bag that you kind of just throw. You kind of pull the bag over the hammock and it keeps it dry. And then it it can just go. Nice. It's, yeah, nice modern twist on a classic. There, I'm not sure I'm sold on sleeping in a hammock though, personally. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. I've done it. So uh, the campsite that you work on, what sort of activities do uh, the people that go there get to try out? Well, the people who camp here where we are at the moment, um, well, they can do all the activities which are on site, but um, if they're just doing camping ones, there are normally fires and stuff, marshmallows, backwards cooking. But then we have um, different activities where we do um, with them was like building shelters, um, like out of your natural environment. And you can also do like giant a 3G swing, which is a big swing. Um, you've got climbing, you've got crate stacking, you've got team building, you've got little rafting, building rafts, you can go kayaking, all sorts of things like that. There's quite a few different activities. There's mapping, hikes. I'm going to reveal yeah. just how little I know about camping now. What is backwards cooking? <laughs> uh, it's Now, I used to think it was cooking in reverse, but it's not, is it? <laughs> <laughs> You would be surprised how many people ask that question because that's the first question I ask when I run that. It's like, what is backwards cooking? And then you get people saying, like, do we have to speak backwards? Do we have to cook backwards? Do we get food and we have to make it raw? And you're like, yeah, no. yeah you, get, you get given an entire cake and I need you to present me with eggs, flour and sugar. <laughs> yeah, it's basically going backwards in time. It's just like backwards cooking. Like uh, mm. modern oh, okay. days, everyone's got a stove, but... Backwards is in the back of the woods. Uh, yeah, you got a fire. Backwards got... rather than backwards. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Ah. So you get a fire. You... There's different ways to cook things as well. It's like, like in a fire, what would you normally cook in a fire? People would say you cook like a steak. Oh, we, make, we baked a cake on the fire the other day. You can mm. make a pizza. Um, you can roast potatoes. There's different ways. You, most people say put them in tin foil, but when you really think about it, if you rub uh, um, rub mud all over it, and I stick about an inch thick of mud around a potato, put it in the fire for an hour, it's perfectly cooked. Wow. Good. Got some, some Never would have thought of that. Disbelieving nice. faces in the studio. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> also, you know, you're not always have, you don't always have tin foil just readily to hand out in the woods, whereas mud yes, plenty is everywhere. <laughs> yes. Why do you think it's such a popular thing that, like, a lot of youth organisations do? At the moment, I would say... The main reason is because of all like the survival shows online, uh, mm. online and on TV and all that kind of stuff with big um, famous actors as participating and making it look very exciting. So it makes all the like, oh, I'm going to go camping. I'm going to go do what that guy did over there. So it's like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, oh, we did that. You see that show? Yeah, we did that before on camp. So yeah, most young people see something. They're like, oh, I'm going to go try that. Mm. And it's like things... If you're living in the city, you don't get to go like, oh, I'm going to build a fire. Uh, yeah, because people on the street will think, what is this guy doing building a fire in the road when you go on a camp? Yeah. <laughs> That's an opportunity. Turns out you get complaints if you do that, as I learned. Yeah. So if you could camp anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? If I could camp anywhere in the world, it would be um, probably Everest. Uh, cause my dream is to summit Everest. So base camp of Everest would be the best campsite for me. Fantastic. Nice. I'm not 100% sure that I would want to do that trek, but I do really want the view from the top. So I yeah. there's, there's kind of only one way to get that. So I should probably probably get training. Oh, you see, I don't know, because the air being thinner uh, and, and everything up there, you know, water boils at such a lower temperature, so you wouldn't be able to have a cup of tea. And, yeah, you know, I'd want a cup, cup of tea. tea with my view. So You'd want to sit there in a sofa at the top of Everest with yep. tea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe climbing Everest is <laughs> not for you then. <laughs> I, I don't think so. What do you think the, the biggest thing that's changed about camping over the last, say, I don't know, 100 years has been? I think just the, basically the modern day technology with camping because camping is just basically going out and camping in the bush. Maybe the locations of campsites. In the old days, you used to just get on a train and go somewhere, just walk in the woods and just put up your tent these days. You don't just go do that. You People own land. Some people don't like trespasses. Um, so you would have to go book a campsite or tell people where you're going and the safety aspect and the equipment. Last time you had to, in the, well, not last time, I wasn't around 100 years ago. Um, 
but the old days you were lugging around like 40, 50 kilograms worth of camping equipment just for you. Nowadays it's like, oh, I'm carrying a four kilogram tent and all my camping stuff. It's very light. It's a lot easier to go camping. Equipment's got a lot easier to use and mm. that kind of stuff. So basically the same, just the environments of where you camp have changed, basically. Well, that's awesome. What's your sales pitch for camping? Sales pitch for camping would have to say, give it a chance. Um, you can't knock it until you've tried it. It's just one night. You can't, it won't mm. kill anyone. Brilliant. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us on the show. And as we uh, always do, we would like to play you a song. Now, is there a particular song that, that makes you think of camping? Yes. Um, Save Tonight by Eagle Eye Cherry. Excellent. Every campfire needs that song. <laughs> Well, we'll sing around the, the glow of the monitors in the <laughs> studio while, while we play yeah. that. Uh, well, <laughs> thank Kevin, you very much. thank you so much for joining us. Have a good day, guys.